Good morning, everybody. This is going to be a video talking about the 2D character archetype in uh, Tekken. But before we jump into that, I just quickly want to acknowledge that last night we went past 10,000 subscribers on this channel. Uh, this isn't a celebration video or anything. Uh, I didn't expect it to happen quite so quickly. Uh, this is just something that I had planned since earlier, but I just want to quickly mention it because if I didn't, it would seem kind of ungrateful. So. Uh, a quick but big thank you to everybody who subscribed. I'm having a lot of fun doing this. I never expected it to have uh, see any kind of success. It was just kind of like a silly hobby for me. Uh, but it's been so much fun and there's uh, much more stuff coming in the future. So thank you for being here and feel free to stick around. But now on to the actual topic uh, of this video. Something that I've been thinking about a lot which is um, the concept of 2D characters and fireball characters uh, in Tekken. If you were watching my early videos, I talked a lot about the fact that I was uh, very skeptical, skeptical about the concept of having functional projectiles in Tekken, and that I really disliked the concept of a character bringing their own bar and their own like uh, you know uh, their own HUD and interface into the game. I didn't like that at all. Uh, and so, uh, how has my view of that evolved now that we've had the game out and a couple of these characters introduced over uh, many months? Um, I think I uh, we should start by talking about why I don't like the concept of, or why I initially didn't like the concept of fireballs and uh, things like that in Tekken. There's something, there's a word that you probably know if you are a fighting game player and you play fighting games outside of Tekken, which is zoning. Um, zoning is a, a character archetype and a play style in a lot of the 2D fighting games in the world. It's basically uh, playing keep out using uh, projectiles, it's projectile based fighting gameplay. And that is something that I don't like uh, at all. It's always, for some reason, felt uh, very uh, unnatural to me in a fighting game to be uh, projectile-based. It becomes something a little bit different. It feels more like a sports game to me for some reason. But I know that it's a, a, a true and tested archetype that is deeply integrated into games like Street Fighter and most, I think, modern fighting games uh, that are 2D. Uh, if you're not zoning based, then you have very important tools in your toolkit for dealing with projectiles, going over them, going under them, uh, armoring through them. It's it's a, a huge part that is woven into those games, so it's an undeniable part of that. But one of the things that I always loved about Tekken is that we don't have that in Tekken. It feels much more like a fighting game to me. And I think because we have 3D space in Tekken, uh, we don't have to use projectiles to sort of keep the game interesting in terms of uh, spacing because there's all the, these different movement options you can use. And there are also a lot of uh, different moves that, you know, close the distance quickly and stuff like that. So, uh, it, Tekken has never needed projectiles in my opinion. There have been a couple of gimmicky moves like laser beams and rockets before, but those are like uh, gimmick moves that are put in for flavor and they've always been super super weak never really uh, meant to be used in any way whatsoever and if you try to use like laser beams or rockets against a good Tekken player back in the day usually just meant that you lost a round because they would deal with it very quickly uh, because of how slow those moves were on startup or recovery or both um, so, uh, when I heard that we were going to have these 2D characters in Tekken 7, I was very skeptical initially because I th it felt like one of the most uh, valuable and unique things about this game was maybe going to go out the window. And for example, when we had the reveal for Akuma, which might be one of the biggest and most like uh, buzzy and exciting character reveals we've had for any fighting game I can remember, I was one of the extremely few people who didn't feel all that happy about it at all. And I would have been much more happy if it was like a low-key legacy character like, you know, Wong is back or something. And that would have been much more fun for me because I, I uh, that's a... a, a traditional Tekken character who's really fun to play uh, and that's more exciting for me than just you know seeing Akuma in the game especially since I'm not a Street Fighter fan. Um, and so uh, I want to go in and talk about these three characters and talk about fireballs in general and talk about them individually. The first thing I'm going to do here though is I want to talk a little bit about DLC characters in Tekken 7, what we've seen so far and, and sort of my hopes for the future. I think there is unfortunately something uh, from my perspective negative you can say about the character choices that Namco have made for Tekken 7 so far uh, because we've had uh, Noctis, uh, we've had Akuma, he's not a DLC character but a guest character, uh, Geese, uh, and then Eliza is like a low-key DLC uh, for the, um, the pre-purchased edition. Uh, but if we talk mainly about Geese, Akuma, and Noctis, the, these huge guest characters from other franchises, uh, why have we seen those and not some of these very um, 
sort of fun legacy characters that us Tekken veterans would love to see back, you know. A big one for me is Julia. Uh, a lot of people talk about wanting Lei Wu Long back. Uh, I can do without him, but I, I know what they mean. Uh, Anna Williams, for me, Kunimitsu would be a huge thing, and I also would actually love to see Roger back. I know a lot of people might not agree, but I think you could make him very interesting in this game. Uh, and he might actually be quite viable for the first time. So uh, I'd love to see Roger or Alex back uh, as well. And Gonryu too. So why do we get these characters instead? Well, it's very obvious. It's to sell copies of the game. Um, people, uh, you know, they reveal one of these big guest characters. People lose their shit at some sort of event. Maximilian dude makes a reaction video where he's yelling about it. That gets, you know, half a million views. But then after two weeks of playing the character, all those people leave the game. And the rest of us who play Tekken in the long term and actually really love and care about the game have to do with those characters instead of the legacy characters that we would have rather seen. Uh, I know, you know, the people who get super, super excited about some sort of big guest character reveal are also the, the people who, I, for the most part in my experience, play Tekken at a very casual level and uh, and their uh, Tekken careers tend to be uh, very short term in my experience. So that's sad, but it's also something, an aspect of the game that I think we have to support in a way because it sells so many more copies of the game than, you know, uh, Julia Chang, that uh, it, it bolsters the, the popularity of Tekken and it gives Namco the budget to uh, you know, make more content, make the next iteration of the series, start working on Tekken 8 or Tekken Tag 3 or whatever it's going to be. So it's unfortunate, but I think now that we've had these three big guest characters, the next one, uh, I think we deserve, those of us who play a lot of Tekken in the long term, deserve to get a cool uh, legacy character. Uh, or a new, I mean, Tekken character that is just a real Tekken character. Uh, an original one. That would be cool as well. It's unlikely at this point, I think, but... A uh, big one for me would be Julia. I think that would be really, really cool. I can totally see her in Tekken 7 uh, working out super cool. Um, okay, so I think we're going to talk about these characters individually and how I think they've impacted the game so far. And I want to start with Akuma because he's the first one we got. And uh, Akuma was actually released quite a long time ago now, back in the Tekken 7 vanilla days when I was still playing Tekken 7 in the arcades and we didn't have a, a console release yet. And it was very obvious to me that Namco stumbled out of the gate and didn't know how to construct a character like this for Tekken because uh, the uh, first iteration of Akuma in this game might be the most broken good character we've ever had in Tekken. He was completely busted in a million ways and they, I think they had to nerf him something like five separate times. I think there were five different hotfixes and patches to try and bring Akuma down to a reasonable level. And then we got the version of him that we have right now. Uh, and so I think that was sort of their trial run for how to make a character like this function. Um, these days, I don't think Akuma is extremely offensive. He's not super hard to play against. Um, but I feel like that complete reconstruction and neutering of him uh, has sort of uh, made him have to stray from the original vision that Namco had for him. And now he's kind of like, he feels like he doesn't have a lot of coherence to his design. Um, I don't really enjoy using him, I don't really enjoy playing against him. He obviously looks cool, um, but uh, despite the fact that he has these meter cancels and fireballs, he sort of functions. Um, the, the fireballs, I mean, they are annoying when you get spammed down by them, but they are reasonable enough, there are reasonable enough ways to deal with them that I think it's okay. Um, uh, it's just something that, uh, it, I mean, it can have a positive effect in the sense that it will force people who don't know how to deal with it to start thinking more constructively about sideways movement, which is very important if you're going to play Tekken anyway, so he might be good for the game in that sense, but now he's just kind of a not very popular but cool looking character we have, and, and I could totally do without him personally. Uh, my initial vision for Akuma when I heard he was going to be in the game was much more positive because they were talking about the fact that they wanted to take this Street Fighter character but make him uh, an integrated part of the Tekken world and the Tekken story. And so I had this vision of him where you know, you can take the iconic Akuma moves that people who play Street Fighter uh, would be very excited to see, but you don't have to make them actual Street Fighter moves. You know, sure, you can, for me, was obviously going to be some sort of lightning screw, like up for three from Lars or lightning screw from Devil Jin, you know, a powerful crush launcher. 
um, that is very launch punishable on block, maybe recovers in crouch, something like that. And that would function like perfectly and be like a normal Tekken move. And it didn't have to have the sure you can input. It could just be his down for two, really. And it would be very similar to uh, Kazumi's down for two. There you have it. That would be like Akuma sure you can, he would say sure you can and jump up and everything, but it would be like a normal Tekken move. His Tatsu, my vision of that was that it was just going to be his spin move and combos, obviously. Uh, that didn't have to have uh, three different versions and, you know, meter burn and all this stuff. It could just have been his down 3 plus 4 and it's what you use to spin in his combo. So there was this version of Akuma that I dreamed of that was a real Tekken character that was uh, um, Tekken 7 uh, mechanics based. But then he just came in with a, a Street Fighter 4 meter bar and he flashes yellow when he does cancels which I always found very jarring because no other characters have that and it just makes him stand out and feel like they've just copy pasted Street Fighter character into Tekken and that's also why I think they had to do all these patches and reworks to sort of make him uh, reasonably balanced um, and now he's just a feature that I don't particularly enjoy but it, it, it's sort of fine uh, and I think the fireballs, um, I would have just put them in as sort of like a gimmick thing, maybe make them high so you can just duck under them so they have the fireballs. Uh, because people, you know, he obviously needs to have the fireball because it's a Kuma. Maybe he could use it as some sort of combo ender and make it usable in some sense. Or maybe just make it uh, so that it works in the close range. Uh, did it have to actually be a zoning projectile that you have to walk around? Not really, but they're in there now and they sort of work, so it's it's kind of fine. And now I want to move on to Geese and talk about him. And the reason I'm going to save Eliza for last is I want to end on a positive note. Uh, because Geese, um, as you probably know, is one of my least favorite characters uh, in this game. Uh, and I'm going to be completely honest with you. I think Geese's implementation into Tekken 7 might actually be, in my opinion, the most catastrophic failure in the entire history of Tekken development. I think it's completely insane what they've done with this character. And uh, a lot of you are obviously going to disagree, and that's fine, uh, but I'm going to uh, be brave and be a little bit controversial here. We're going to make a video eventually where I break this down with frame data in-game and show you exactly what I mean. I want you to know that I don't say these things willy-nilly. I actually want to back up my opinions with like solid sort of information. But just quickly, I think he's uh, safer than he needs to be. I think he has his entire character design and gameplay boils down to one very long string, basically. Uh, you can cancel into that string off of many, many things, but because he's safe and he can cancel into that string off of down jabs, he has this uh, these very powerful counter hit low. So it's kind of like he pressures you, but he's safe, so you can punish him. And though if you try and take your turn there, he can just go into uh, some sort of crush move or counter hit move or down jab, cancel into his favorite string, get free mix ups. And if you try and deal with that by blocking low, then he has. Uh, uh, his safe hop kick which is obviously crazy but it's like a safe hop bitch slap that is a uh, very long range uh, for a mid right there so again puts himself at basically zero risk and he can launch you anyway and so uh, another very interesting and weird thing that I, I can't for the life of me imagine why they thought was a good idea is that when he pressures you against the wall and he does one of these long strings the final hit of the string that is completely natural is the wall splat move and that's something that doesn't exist in Tekken you either ball splat someone with like a, a two hit string that is natural uh, and if you try and just keep going with the string they slide down on the floor and you um, and you whiff but with Geese he does the whole string like a whole combo he then wall splats you and he then has these very very powerful um, wall combos especially when he has meter that just do uh, completely broken amounts of damage in my opinion completely broken amounts of damage and I think it's especially crazy when the wall carry is that good and when he has uh, max mode uh, he can uh, launch you off of like a safe tiny poke and so it's uh, uh, yeah, it's weird. And then the spacing game is obviously extremely good as well because the projectile works, but then he has good running moves and that safe long range, low crushing uh, hop kick slap thing. So it just uh, uh, way too simple for the amount of power that he has. And I think that I can actually present you with a constructive uh, argument, like a sort of proof that this is true. Because uh, if um, I ask you why you uh, choose to play Geese, if you do, I think a lot of people will say that they love the design, they love the game he's from, whether it's, it's Fatal Fury or King of Fighters, I don't know. Um, and he has this huge legacy and you've always loved Geese and whatever. And that's fine, but I'm going to call bullshit on a majority of people who say that for an obvious reason, uh, which is over there. Akuma is probably one of 
if not the most iconic fighting game villain uh, in the history of the world and he's from the most popular fighting game franchise in the world akuma has a huge legacy he's been, he's been in so many games i mean people who don't even play fighting games know exactly who he is he's an icon and so if you base your character choice on that you have this uh, cool villain that you love from another game that you used to play when you were younger, I think it's very, very odd that right now Geese is many, many times more popular than Akuma. It's obvious that people play him for other reasons, and I think that reason is that it's very, very easy to do very, very well with this character. And I think it feels like uh, drowning in liquid bullshit to play against him. I don't enjoy it whatsoever. But like I said, enough whining, we're going to make a video where I explain exactly uh, why I uh, feel this way about him with frame data and everything. When I've taught myself to actually play the character as well, because I don't want to be one of these people who just complains and reacts from, you know, uh, emotion rather than fact. Because that uh, makes the, the channel uninteresting to watch and subscribe to. And then if we're going to talk about Elisa, uh, this is obviously what I wanted to build towards because as you know, Elisa is one of my main characters and one of my favorite designs in this game. Uh, Elisa, uh, I have a lot of love for, for her for a lot of reasons. I mean, a lot of you might not remember a little game called Tekken Revolution. It was a game that uh, came out in between Tekken Tag 2 and Tekken 7. It was not a main series franchise, in a franchise game for Tekken, but it was a full-fledged Tekken game with matches and everything. Uh, and it was basically like a clone of Tekken Tag 2 with some new interesting mechanics uh, thrown in. And they wanted to create an original character for that game, and so they held a contest. And us in the Tekken community got to decide what we wanted, and there were a couple of really interesting choices. I think one was, you know, Miguel's younger sister is dead. She died on her wedding day in a wedding dress. And so they wanted to make her into like a zombie bride kind of character, like an undead a character kind of like, I guess, Hisako from um, Killer Instinct. Maybe that's what actually culminated in Nina's outfit in Tekken 7, the, the burned uh, uh, wedding dress. That was really cool. There was an ev evil female version of Lars uh, that they wanted to make called the sexy female Tekken Force girl. Um, and a lot of other stuff. But one of the options was sexy vampire. And that's the choice that won. And so we got Elisa. So Elisa Eliza is actually a character that we sort of took part in designing in the Tekken community. Which I think makes her special. But the other special thing about her is that she was the first sort of projectile uh, character in Tekken. And so I think even in those early days... Um, Namco were thinking about doing something like this with Tekken 7. And so they wanted to use her as sort of a trial run and see... Uh, how you could construct a fireball character in a way that worked in Tekken. Uh, and then uh, she came out and I think they've done a fantastic job with making her look uh, great, feel great to play. She's like fun, I love the design. Um, and then she does have uh, typical like Akuma based uh, mechanics in terms of her cancels and her fireballs. Uh, so the reason I really like Elisa is I think you could just move some pieces around in her design and she would actually become a normal Tekken character. Uh, and, and you could just sort of like uh, slice off these Street Fighter 4 parts of her design and just move them around a little bit and she would be uh, much more the Tekken character that I would have liked to play. And so I play her currently in spite of all those things. Um, so I'll explain what I mean. For example, when you have an uh, EX meter or blood meter with uh, Elisa, uh, what most people tend to burn it on is her EX dive kick. It's a very powerful crush move uh, that she has access to. Um, and I want you to imagine right now uh, another version of that move that is not a meter burn that would have functioned uh, completely for the character in a very uh, organic way. It would have been a perfect rage drive. Um, it's exactly what um, a lot of other rage drives in the game do. You get this, uh, you, you spend your rage on this big uh, safe-ish option, you gamble, uh, and uh, if you get a launch, then you can turn it around. It's like a comeback mechanic that functions very differently from the Rage Art, but it's very similar to uh, Kazumi's Rage Drive, for example, or something like that. It functions very similarly. And so the difference between her EX Dive Kick and a Rage Drive is, you know, if she can uh, 
build up two bars, you can actually try and spend it twice in a single round. So it's a little bit different mechanically, but I think on the whole it would it functions very similarly to a Rage Drive. And if you just removed her bar and you removed all of this other stuff, the meter burn stuff, uh, it, she could just be a normal Tekken character and that would be her Rage Drive. Uh, and you didn't would, didn't have to do all these Street Fighter style inputs with all the quarters quarter circles and stuff uh, either. And I would have much preferred that version of uh, Elisa, I think. But uh, I think she's fun to play. I really really enjoy her Moonlight stance. I think it's a, a good example of how to create a long range character that isn't a zoning character. We can get powerful mix ups from a range. Uh, I, I like the fact that she's not uh, exceptionally powerful. Uh, when you want to get damage with her, you have to construct it by setting something up or getting a counter hit. So, yeah, I think the design is fantastic, but I would have much preferred if she was a real Tekken character and she had all of this weird Street Fighter style stuff just cut out. And I feel the exact same way about Akuma. And in terms of Geese, I would prefer if they just completely removed him and we could forget he ever existed. Uh, I don't like the way he sounds, he screams at you, I even dislike the music on his stage. I think it sounds like a talentless fourth grader's flute recital. Uh, okay, so I think that's gonna wrap up my thoughts on this topic and how I think the implementation of these characters has worked in the game. Uh, I still don't think zoning is a huge part of Tekken and I hope it isn't going to be going forward. Now that we have Noctis, however, I think we've seen a very good example of how to construct a projectile that works in a very techy way. I think they hit the nail on the head perfectly with Noctis's shift break. It's extremely long range, it's much much faster than the fireballs that we see right now, but if you can sidestep it, you can punish him hard. The fact that they gave him that uh, compulsory, com uh, compulsory roll forward that makes him very uh, vulnerable when he whiffs uh, is uh, completely genius. It's the perfect way to construct a Tekken projectile. Imagine if Akuma does a fireball and uh, if it gets blocked or whiffed, he has to teleport straight in front of you and be at minus frames. That would just completely change the way it worked. It's uh, just like hitting with a move, but you like a punch or a normal kick in the close game in Tekken, but you just happen to do it from a very long range. And then the game, uh, and then that's balanced out by the fact that the move is linear and it's just perfect. That's the correct way to do it. And so if we're going to see more projectile stuff going forward in Tekken, I hope that's the way they do it. Um, and Akuma and Geese probably aren't going to be in any future versions of this game. Elisa, I doubt it, but I hope that she sticks around because I really like her. But I uh, also hope that they start removing her bar and all this EX stuff and they make her more in line with the normal uh, Tekken character. Uh, because I still don't believe that zoning is something that we need in Tekken. And I mean, when zoning goes bad, it goes really bad. I think one of the most uh, <laughs> like the most fun examples of zoning going haywire is when Injustice 2 was released and I was watching all of these uh, games where people were playing dead shots. Uh, to me, it, just, it was literally like watching a game of Pong uh, to me. It looked so extremely boring that I... Uh, like I got itchy, it gave me eczema how boring it was and I think uh, when you're making a modern fighting game I think you should aim a little bit higher in terms of uh, gameplay dynamics than a ping pong simulator that came out in 1972. Uh, all right, that's going to wrap it up. My final comment is uh, now that we have this in the game and we are uh, enjoying the game in spite of it, just give us Julia and uh, give us JC, give us JC or Julia, or give us both. Do a Violet uh, Lee thing where she can have both costumes, or do a Kuma Panda thing where she's two separate entries in the roster, and maybe the Julia version has uh, some powerful mix-up op options, offers some cool lows, and then to compensate for the fact that JC lacks that she has powerful throws, and we get a female grappling character right now. We only have King as a grappling character in the game. Give us JC, give us a cool female grappling character that we like and remember who has uh, a hop kick and shotgun. I want to play around with shotgun, which is my favorite Julia move, like the most uh, iconic Julia move ever. It would function perfectly in this game, but any character, I'd love Gonryu, I'd love Roger or Alex would be super cool in this game. So uh, that's what I, I hope for the next character. And I'm pretty sure we are going to get more characters, at least one more, uh, probably a, a few more. It's going to be my guess because of how well this game is going and how much how much interest it's generating. But that's going to wrap this little, uh, I guess, rant video up. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, it was just my sort of thoughts that I've been swimming around in my head about this topic. And I think uh, you probably have a lot of thoughts as well. So uh, please share them. Uh, more stuff uh, very, very soon. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys again uh, in the next couple of days.